In this video, I focus on the different types of disasters that happen at different boundaries. And we have the earthquakes, the volcanoes, and the tsunamis. These are the three are responsible or are caused by uh, different boundaries. Now, the first one, so earthquakes, occurs at two different boundaries. So it's mainly the transform boundary, but also occurs at the um, conversion boundary. Right? These two boundaries are mainly responsible for most of the earthquakes. Now at the transform boundary, remember transform boundaries was when we have two different plates that go past each other side by side. Right? So this is plate one, this is plate two, and they're kind of sliding past each other side by side. They're not ramming into each other, but they're just going side by side. But remember these edges, the boundaries, they're quite rugged. So you can see it's not that's not smooth, that's rugged, which means every now and then they get stuck. And when they get stuck, they can take years and years to get unstuck. And once they do get unstuck, well then this whole time they've been stuck, all that energy gets released all at once, and they move quite dramatically in a short period of time, and that releases all the energy um, really quickly, and that's an earthquake. Right? So here it says focus, but basically the point where it's, it, it jams and then eventually starts to unlock, that's called the hypocenter or the focus. That's where it actually kind of you know, gets stuck. Uh, after time, it eventually gets unstuck, releases all the energy. The point on the surface, where if you just go right up, vertically up from that point, the point on the surface where that happened is the epicenter. Right? So that's the surface, the focus is usually deep down somewhere. That's actually where the rock got stuck, but the epicenter is where you feel it on the surface. So those are two terminologies, focus and epicenter. And the fault is usually the crack we see uh, between the two boundaries that are um, going side by side, right? So the San Andreas Fault, for example, is, is something that you can check up, and that looks pretty cool. But that's the fault or the line between the two plates that are rubbing against each other. Now, volcanoes occur usually at converging boundaries, but they also can occur at um, diverging boundaries. So those two different boundaries. Now what happens, remember subduction happens at converging boundaries, when the oceanic, so this here is the oceanic um, plate, subducts, goes under the continental, this is the continental plate. So it's actually going underneath that plate. Uh, when it does, it melts, and the water that goes underneath evaporates. Uh, that would cause lots of pressure buildup, because the gas, the water gas tries to escape, goes up, Kind of ruptures the crust and you basically have a small little tunnel that forms because of that pressure and when the tunnel gets all the way to the surface it has the potential to explode so all the magma from the mantle and the pressure explodes out and that creates a volcano right so they usually occur at converging or diverging boundaries uh, but they're connected to the subduction zones the melting and the evaporating of um, rock and, and, uh, and water in the form of steam. That steam and, and the magma uh, creates a pressure which creates holes in the crust and that causes volcanoes to come out and explode. Uh, the other one is tsunamis. Tsunamis usually occur at also converging and diverging boundaries. Um, and they're connected to earthquakes. So earthquakes can occur at these as well. Uh, now what happens, for example, if we have an earthquake, and this is usually on the floor, so on the oceanic crust. Two oceanic crusts kind of collide or, or, or there's an earthquake that happens for whatever reason. Um, and then that whole pool of water that was beforehand just flat, basically a part of it is lifted up. And we call that, we say it's displaced. So that water is displaced because of the earthquake. And that displaced water has lots of energy. And that displaced water will basically go in both directions, but at such high energy that when it hits, finally eventually hits uh, the shoreline, it's so strong that it will cause absolute devastation, right? As opposed to a tidal wave, which is through wind, and that's much weaker. So these tsunami waves are different to those, and they create much more destruction. So those are your three different types of disasters, and they're each connected to different types of, of um, plates, but you need to know roughly how each of them works.